Before we cut across uh, to our uh, political analysts, I want to go to the Bharatiya Janata Party spokesperson. Um, Prashant Jais, the fact is, uh, one thing I would reckon you'll admit, that till now, the battle south of the Vindyas has been rather difficult for the Bharatiya Janata Party. A quick look at your track record. Um, let's say, you know, th there are 130 seats in the five big states of the south. You've only had 29 of those in the last elections. You've maximized the north where the Hindi heartland is concerned. The gains will have to come from the south. Is that possible this time around? Preeti, firstly, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Remember, we had two seats in the Lok Sabha in 1984. From two seats in 1984 Lok Sabha to 303 on its on our own, without the alleys count being taken into account in 2019, it's a giant leap. Therefore, if you're saying that we are having about 30 seats out of 130 in uh, the south of India, as you put it across, definitely we are making strong inroads. We have consistently increased our oat share in the south. And Karnataka has been uh, one of the states where we have consistently made very good progress. Because even when Congress had formed governments, uh, state governments here, we have consistently got more seats. Even in the 2019 Lok Sabha, in the 2018 Vidhan Sabha in Karnataka, Congress and JDS had then formed the government. Even then, we had 25 seats on our own, and one seat was okay. by, the, by the independent. So, looking at the oath share, you look at Tamil Nadu also, you look at Telangana, we won four seats last time. We are making inroads, and we have consistently increased our oath share, which means the people who are believing in the ideology of Bharatiya Janata Party and the leadership of Narendra Modi mm -hmm. is increasing by the day. So, therefore, right. as we draw closer to the election date, and okay. then... They but Prashant Ji, yes, you speak of... of the ideology of the Bharatiya Janata Party and till now at least the South has been averse to that ideology of oneness. You know, the southern states uh, steeped in regional pride, linguistic pride, the whole oneness of it all, which is the core ideology of the BJP and the RSS hasn't been able to cut it in the South of India. But we're going to come to that in, you know, in a short while. Uh, but I want to bring in the Congress spokesperson as well. You know, Bhavya, let's look at the seat share. 29 of the 303 for the BJP, that comes down to about 9. 6%. Congress, 28 of its uh, 52 seats uh, came, a mammoth share, came in from the South, which is a massive 53.8%. But there's a point that the BJP spokesperson is making. Look, right from the beginning till now, um, the South was your bastion at one point of time. Your vote share, your seat share is constantly decreasing while the BJP is constantly increasing on the rise. You know, uh, every political party goes through a phase and ups and downs. But what's happening with BJP is not the same. They're not able to... Yes, last time in Karnataka, they got, a, they got many seats uh, during this MP elections. But that won't be the case even this time. Whether it is Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Telangana or Kerala, for that matter, um, we are very sure BJP is not going to win many seats. Why? People of Karnataka have already given their mandate during assembly elections, reducing them to mere 66, uh, 60 plus seats. One, and we have seen the victory in Telangana. Coming to Tamil Nadu and Kerala, you know, the governor the BJP has appointed, they, they are actually not letting the governments there in Tamil Nadu work, and the people have seen this. They're not approving any of their bills. If that is on one part, BJP has realized that their hate politics or divisive politics will not play, uh, you know, turn into votes in South India. Because even when Mr. Modi came to Karnataka and literally went to every nook and corner of Karnataka and every road in Bangalore to campaign, we saw the results. And in Tamil Nadu, the AIG, ADMK, their own alliance partner, refused to put Mr. Modi's photo on their posters previously. We have seen all of this. And uh, it's not just that. Let's come back to infrastructure. This time, Narendra Modi has visited Tamil Nadu uh, to actually, uh, you know, inaugurate a lot of infrastructural projects. But I would like to give you three facts about uh, BJP and their investment in infrastructure. Okay. Almost, you, you know, the value of new infrastructure projects by the government has declined by 81% compared to previous years. This year, it has declined by 
and 837 infrastructural projects have been delayed for the more, for more than three years across India. And then value of new infrastructure projects by private sector has decre declined by 78% compared to previous year. Then this is the case if Mr. Modi has visited Tamil Nadu to invest in Tamil Nadu's infrastructure okay. or shows their desperation. No, they know their I'll come back to you, sir, just one minute. Let me yeah. uh, bring in our other... In South, okay. They know, they know but that's